What's up, nerds? Welcome to Nintendo Pal Block for June 20th, 2017. I am one of your hosts, Corey Deering, and alongside me, as always, fresh off of E3, <laughs> Edward, Edward Barnell. Yes! Hello, everybody. Oh, Nintendo's E3 was amazing. Ah, they I'm still just blown away. Killed it. Killed oh. it. Killed it. Not only during the 25-minute presentation, but the treehouse stuff they showed yes. was also amazing. Oh. Oh. Ed, how was your E3? Did you enjoy E3 as much as I did? Yes, I did. I love this year's E3. I think everybody came. Well, not everybody. Uh, came and knocked it out the park. They all delivered some games that I want to play. But Nintendo just, like, slayed everybody. I think they're still mopping up the blood from everybody else conference yeah but yeah yeah i man e3 was it was it was the best it was the best nintendo conference i've seen in a long time or direct mm-hmm. but i guess you could include conferences too the last time i remember being this excited about a nintendo thing was the year that wind waker prime and and sunshine were all there at the same time that's probably like the equivalent for that year at least they all came out that year and i'm just like i'm i'm going back to like 2014's e3 bayonetta smash uh breath of the wild just like the first reveal of legend of zelda and just true like they the the smash presentation on sunday when like the internet was down for almost two days. Getting Earthbound beginnings, like they, like Nintendo slayed 2014, and for me, completely they slayed 2015. Is and this year, I mean, and last year they did too. But this year, wow, they they really brought it. But I'm a t- Nintendo fan, so I can't help. Yeah, it. yeah, I, I just, man, I'm excited. I am. Uh, I just. Dude, I just like it opened up with like the summer stuff, which I'm really excited that they just yes. did a little montage at the beginning because they didn't spend any time after that little montage on Splatoon or Arms or po- or Pokémon even. Like yeah, they showed that summer summer multiplayer montage and it was Arms, Splatoon, Pokémon and Rocket League. They snuck some Rocket League in there and like right. That was a that was a cool announcement too. Uh, but then they, they just opened up with and that Xeno, <laughs> yeah, and FIFA. Uh, <laughs> they opened up with that Xenoblade uh, trailer, still confirmed for holiday 2017. I which is super so exciting. Bad. Yes, it's. I mean, that's. Uh, it's giving me those Final Fantasy IX vibes that I like. It's uh-huh. giving me the Xenoblade stuff that I loved from the first two games. It's just. Uh, Man, I'm ready for that game. I, I think I'm more <laughs> like on the big on the grand scale of how excited I am for everything that's coming out. Like I'm excited. <laughs> I think in in like the near future of the of the games that are coming out, Xenoblade's yes. probably at the top of my list, I think. You know, I I'm excited for Mario Odyssey and all the wacky stuff you can do in that game that they showed uh-huh. off. But at the end of the day, it's still I mean it's still relatively mario right whereas xenoblade Uh i'm excited to explore that world and 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 see what because monolith looks like a team that can take the like the you know quote small amount of power that the switch offers and i want to see what they can shove into that thing right it's because they showed that they showed that big mountain monster again yeah, like if you, if anyone who owns Dinner Blade Chronicles X, like if you see the power of the, everybody knows the power of the Wii U, but if you see the graphics and the landscapes and environments and all this big stuff that's moving in the background, you're like, how in the heck did you fit all of this in? And then you see they work in Breath of the Wild. And it's just like, oh my goodness. So go definitely exploring the world of Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is going to be fantastic. That artwork is going to just be like spot on beautiful. And I just want to see how big this land is. 
and what adventures I'm going to be able to find. Hopefully, if I do a lot of side adventures, easier to get to and uh, be able to handle than it will be for Xenoblade Chronicles X. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but Xenoblade Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is like high up there, like a must-own for me. We're pretty much everything that they show is a must-own. Xenoblade Chronicles 2 looks like it's taking you know, the giant world that they made in X and adding the story from one Mm -hmm. and just making like an amalgamation of of both games. But I mean, it's just, uh, I am really excited to see if they make Amiibo for that game or not. They will. They'll have some Amiibo. Ah, man. I, yeah, I, speaking of Amiibo, they did announce a ton of Amiibo, uh, which I already pre-ordered the four champions of Zelda. And the Metro nice. one, by the way. Nice. Uh, but yeah, that's Xenoblade. Kicking it off with Xenoblade and confirming that it's holiday was probably a smart move. Uh, yeah. You know, because that's their biggest game this fall, probably outside of out of outside of Mario. Right. So, so if it, uh, if there's any delay, it's probably going to be because of the localization. But uh, right. knowing how Treehouse is, they're going in and they're doing the work. And mm-hmm. Treehouse is good at what they do. So. Yeah. Uh, so that was exciting. What did they follow Xenoblade with? Uh, if, uh, follow Xenoblade with Kirby 2018. So this is going right. to be like a 2D co-op multiplayer kind of game, but it looks like a remake of the first Kirby game. Um, you'll be able to suck at their powers, and if you want to add more, uh, sorry about that, you want to add more to it, you could throw hearts on it uh, and add more players to it and keep on adding more hearts. Yeah, I, I am, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not really into the Kirby games, but I mean, I'm gonna get it because it's oh. first party Nintendo, and my goal is to, this time around, own all the first party Nintendo titles. Well, is this like an action beat 'em up kind of game? And I love. Yeah, it looks like a, looks like a simple Kirby brawler almost. Like yes, you know, multiplayer whatever. So, uh, it looks cool. I, I'm interested to see. Kirby get back to what Kirby is instead mm-hmm. of you know I as as much as I thought Epic Garden was was cute uh, you know that that art style was the selling point of that game and then you know robot the selling point is is the the robots and then the Canvas Curse and Rainbow Curse were the stylist game so I'm excited to get back to Kirby where he's sucking up enemies and stealing their stuff and yes so. Uh, and then after Kirby was the Yoshi game, which I'm super excited for. Yeah, Yoshi's 2018 is coming, but that was later on. We actually had the Pokemon announcement. Oh, right. So right. before we get to okay. Yoshi... Uh, You're right. It's the Pokemon and then my favorite I got you. I got you. I got the notes. I got you. I got you. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, I don't know so, what I would, I'm going to let everybody know now. I don't know what I would do without you, Ed. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> well, uh... uh the Pokemon Company came on and they talked about how Poké Tournament is coming to a Switch. Uh, but he also made an announcement that a core traditional grind and build up Pokemon is coming to the Nintendo Switch. So this will be the first Pokemon game that is actually from the main series on a console. Yeah, which is super exciting because I didn't get Sutter Moon and I'm still, I don't know if I'm going to be getting ultra sun or ultra moon just Mm -hmm. for the fact that like you know by the time that game comes out like i'm gonna be playing so many switch games that i don't know i i want to put my time towards that except you know i'm glad on 3ds i'm gonna have to play that but uh yeah i i haven't been really into pokemon in a long time and Mm -hmm. like it's i'm i feel bad when i say that because I, I like what that franchise does. I I like the simple. I mean, it's it's what Nintendo does best is like they give you this simple game, and then you can make it as complex or as challenging as you want to make it. You know, and that's Pokemon does that very well. Also, uh, you know, I still go back to Red and Blue once in a while, and I I really wish they would like really bring those Pokemon back to the forefront. But I know it's it's always about 
creating new monsters and giving a new generation of fans some Pokemon to latch onto. But yes. when it comes to Switch, man, I definitely plan on getting into it. Well, that it is for Pokemon games within a year uh, that's coming. So, Poker Tournament, uh, also uh, Gold and Silver. Then you got Archer Sun and Moon, and then you got this Pokemon, uh, Pokemon from Switch. So, like, that's a lot of Pokemon. So, that's definitely when that comes to game comes to Switch. That's more guaranteed sales for Switch owners or people who are into Pokemon who want to get a Switch. So, that's more sales. So, that's kind of guaranteed sales right there. And um, if Nintendo keeps releasing like holiday 3DS bundles, Archer Sun and Moon will also be big sales for them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Pokemon's going to sell for 3DS, no doubt, especially because that the new 2DS is a, it's a sexy system. Like I really, like if I didn't have a new 3DS already and you know, even if I do have one, I, (laughs) I think that's a nice system for people to latch onto. Like, you know, and, and I like the black and the blue one that's coming here in July. I would like to see an all black one. And if they did make an all-black one, I'd probably take the plunge and trade in my 3DS for a 2DS. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, just to just to have one. Uh, I don't use the 3D at all, and I could. I like the way the new 2DS looks. Uh, you know, with the the hinges aren't as bulky, and it's just a slimmed down version of the system. You know, I would I would like one, but uh, you know, that's. I mean, they've already confirmed their planning on supporting the 3ds beyond 2018 so uh it looks like the system's gonna be sticking around for a while so i might as well just refresh everything I think gonna, fresh it up. yeah until they get to their new handheld I, right it, i mean and, I, think, won't be, I think the switch is still gonna cause this with a handheld system oh i i the more and more you know they say they're gonna support 3ds the more and more i believe you like it wouldn't even surprise me if like they came out with a, you know, quote, kid-friendly Switch where it still plays the Switch games, mm-hmm. but it's more durable. It's There's no dock. You know, the Joy-Cons don't come off, that kind of stuff. Uh, but more and more, as they say they're going to support 3DS, the more I believe you. And, like, it, <laughs> six months ago when we were talking about this, I said you were crazy, but, uh, you know, my bad. I do, I do believe they're going to make another handheld at some point. That's just you, their core market. So I love you, boss. You already know. Look, I know. I, I might not know Nintendo fully inside out, but seeing their business strategy throughout the years, they're not going. to... I mean, if even if a product fail or it's not doing well, they're still going to support it unless they need to pull it. The yeah, virtual, the virtual boy is an example, uh, but they did try to support it, and. They there was just some uh it was just a gamble that they tried to do something and it didn't work. Where like their console, like the Wii U, they still support it, even with the Wii, they still support it. And with the DS being a laughing stock at first, it started picking up the more games that came out and it just caught on wildfire. Uh new 3DS or 3DS at that point in time, it didn't really catch on that same wildfire, but I'm like at 68 million. That's still good. And more people are still going out buying the 3DS and 2DS brand. And people are just like, Yeah, I'm I'll get that for 2DS. Yeah, I'll get that for Switch. Like Nintendo yeah. knows its business for hardware and software. So yeah. it might not see it might not seem like they are selling a lot. But they continually sell games throughout a period of time. They continue to sell systems throughout a period of time. Yeah. Yeah, I... I, Man, that 3DS just keeps chugging along. I can't believe it. Yeah. Uh, But, okay, so after the Pokemon announcement... Oh, the screen goes... Was the best... It was my favorite thing, and I actually... Busted out my <laughs> Wii Remote and Nunchuck and my <laughs> Metroid Prime Trilogy disc for Wii. Did you play it on after Wii U? this? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna play on Wii U. Okay. I, I mean, it's backwards compatible, so I mean, I just I have the disc, so I'm just gonna do that. Uh, but so all of a sudden, 
after the Pokemon announcement, they get to this black screen and you see this starry sky. And I got really excited because I knew right away, almost right away. And then the clouds or fog or whatever you want to call it started Mm -hmm. shifting into the, the Samus S and you can very, you can see the S and I got really excited and I went like this. And if you watch our watch along, uh, it was very exciting. And then they showed the four and I was like, yes, it's, I, I, it could have been Metroid 4. It could have been Metroid Prime 4. It could have been Metroid 4. For duration force. I wouldn't even care. <laughs> no. I mean, they, uh, I'm, I'm just like, they announced Metroid Prime 4. Now, they said in development, and that's it. it so it's probably, it's probably a 2019 game. I'm going to just, I'm going to be honest. I bet it's a 2019 game because next year is going to be Fire Emblem, Yoshi, Kirby, probably smash next fall uh mm-hmm. i'm sure you know retro hasn't announced that they're if they're not working on prime four i'm assuming it's donkey kong or their no, new their, ip their new ip like so like, uh, i mean it's it's gonna be one of those two games whether or not like you know i don't know if retro has two teams or not but you know they're working on their new ip i think nintendo's given them the team. time and the tools to work on their new ip yeah retro has one team so everybody in retro right now is working on that one game uh and unless they do a direct this fall that retro game would be the big game for next year under with uh probably with kirby and yoshi depending on if they get full titles and definitely with metroid prime 4. um so it will be those four and then we'll see something 2019 will be the biggest game or they'll lead into something big for 2019. Yeah. So, so, uh, so that's six. That's, I mean, that's exciting. I, and I mean, I'm actually excited because like they still have the, the lead producer on the Metroid prime series mm-hmm. working on it with a team, what they confirmed it's internally at Nintendo, right? Um, no, uh, is that retro? No, Metroid, the Metroid prime game. It's retro is right. not developing it. Oh, oh, yeah! It's eternal at uh, Nintendo. I'm sorry. I'm I was, I got so hooked on retro. Sorry, that was <laughs> <laughs> which which like at first I was kind of concerned, but like the lead design, the lead producers on that mm-hmm. is a very capable studio. Obviously, like <laughs> so right. that actually makes me really excited to see what retro is working on. Uh, you know, because that means we're getting another game. They're not working on Metroid, so they're we're getting another Nintendo exclusive game. Right. Uh, so that makes you even more excited. And so. I think, pro- and probably what happened was like right after they did Ducky Kong Country Tropical Freeze, probably took a vacation, came back to regroup, and was just like, okay, now let's work on the next game. Let's get the prototype. Let's get the story. Let's get the artwork. Let's research and develop. Uh, let's get this gameplay mechanic and then present it to Nintendo to show them what we got. Okay, we got to approve. Now we got to get all of this planned out and still work out some kinks. I think that's probably yeah. what's going on. So. Yeah. Uh, so that was exciting. That was that was definitely my highlight of the show. I mean, even though it was just a trailer. Uh, I mean, I guess now is a perfect time to announce that they were like, they during the Treehouse, the second game they show off is a Metroid 2D game they're remaking the Game Boy game for 3DS uh, with some cool new features uh, that Mm -hmm. finishing the finishing move, the melee finishing move that they were showing off looks really cool. Uh, So uh, it's interesting that Nintendo would go and make a 2D Metroid game based off of the Game Boy game. I can't believe nobody has done that before. Are you hinting at AM2R? Yeah, I'm just I'm just messing around. Shout out to the AM2R guys. I know that they're actually really excited to see this game exist too. So yeah, uh, well, uh, I th- I think Nintendo probably at that time didn't plan on doing a remake to Metro Prime Two, uh, because you know whereas AM2R is is kind of a fan remake with some added stuff. Uh, Nintendo incorporated some stuff from <clears throat> uh, from Tecmo and, you know, probably was working on stuff to make it actually better. Uh, 
and you know they probably were just like okay we got now that we got this amiibo functionality we got new ideas that we could actually impl- implement in this game so there might be some more and if and we probably don't know that there might be like new levels and stuff like that like we haven't fully understand what's all going on into it you know we just got the gameplay demo which i couldn't believe that they actually showed like that was a big reveal so there might be some more stuff we just don't know yet that even at the guys at m 2 r probably didn't even think of and shout mm-hmm. out and like and just like you said shout out to them yeah i'm actually really interested because like they confirmed they're they're working on a new game because like a game that they're actually going to sell mm-hmm. and i mean i think it's i'm assuming it's going to be a metroid light game right i mean i that's my assumption just based on the work that they did with am2r and you know i know you and larry interviewed them uh which was a good episode of world one one you should go check that out it was really good yes. uh but you know, I'm I am excited to see what they're going to work on next and actually, you know, s- sell us because I kind of wouldn't mind giving that team my money for a Metroid style game. Well, it would be good to see what they do. Um, I don't have no clue myself on what they're planning to do or anything, but uh, that's probably going to be a few years off. So probably we probably won't see that for the next three or four years. So probably, yeah. it, hopefully, it, it'll probably be on Steam. It, if so, I guess that might be my first Steam game, unless a console does pick them up. Let's, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, I mean, I'm, sh- I would almost, I mean, I don't, I don't want to put words in their mouth, but I would almost guarantee that, you know, with the quote unquote success of AM2R and like the the notice that that got, like, I think Sony or Microsoft or even Nintendo, with the way they're pushing indies, like, would be dumb not to say hey you can put your game on our system we would you know if it, if it's good enough you know like right if, i, I think know. if if it doesn't show up on a nintendo console it most likely show up on a sony console if sony is hungry for that kind of game like if their game is really good i, I think if sony is very welcoming for, to indie games i think sony will snag it up before anybody else but we shall yeah. see whatever the game may be yeah so uh yeah that's exciting so so now we got it to yoshi 2018 (laughs) right Uh, right that game looks adorable yes it does um i also i also want to point out that that game that game and that kirby game are being developed in unreal 4 which is exciting that nintendo is using unreal to show off what the switch can do i think after breath of the wild using the havoc engine I think it's kind of smart that they're using Unreal and seeing uh-huh. what because they knowing Nintendo, they're probably doing stuff on that engine no one ever thought of. Yeah. I mean, I bet they're they're trying stuff that maybe even Epic, you know, maybe deep in the the people that develop the engine know, but like the developers of like, you know, like Gears or Unreal Tournament or even I think cliff blazinski is using unreal 4 to make lawbreakers like mm-hmm. even that kind of stuff you know they're the yoshi game has this uh weird world twisting mechanic you know like so that's ah man that, this yoshi game looks just looks awesome oh, and someone someone it. said it was a follow-up to yoshi's woolly world but i don't i can't see it being yoshi's woolly world 2. no that, because... the yoshi they're using is relatively normal looking Right, and there's different arts and crafts in that game. So there's yeah. a different art style in that game. Um, definitely with it, because uh, like when he even hits the piranhas and stuff, like there's no uh, wool wrapping them up or anything. Right, it's so, more of a, I mean, all this stuff is like cardboard cut out, uh, almost like the Yoshi, I'm watching the trailer right now, the Yoshi that they're using looks more i mean it looks fuzzy but it doesn't look like a like a woolly world yoshi he just looks yeah. like he's soft that and fits this world like you know i i i just i don't know i mean it'd be cool if they did woolly world eventually like another woolly world but this just looks like a yoshi game so All right looks cool though i like the way like 
uh, <laughs> he puts on this weird triceratops head and just kind of charges through everyone. Yeah. So, and it looks like they're taking the Donkey Kong Country, the new ones where like the background also has things you can do in it, and you could go into the background and do two D platforming and then come back to the foreground. So, I, I it's would, really good. I would love to see another Super Paper Mario game that came on Wii with the Switch in perspectives. I would love to see that come back to Switch. Yeah, I mean, I would like to see another Paper Mario game in general, uh, you know, just to next. I year. mean, Color Splash. I get. I, I guess Color Splash just came out, didn't it, last year? Yeah. So, I still need to play that game. Oh, so say good. I want one, and I haven't played it yet. Uh, I'm actually getting ready to like start some Wii U games, uh, just because you know I I I need to finish before I dive deep into the Switch. Like I I I mean you know how much I've played my Switch, but yeah, you know I want to I want to finish Tokyo Mirage Sessions and I, I, me too Xenoblade X and me too. Color Splash and me too. Uh, there's just there's so many games. It, it, and maybe tonight I'll do Breath of the Wild. So uh, you still haven't beaten it, have you? So our next <laughs> game is Fire Emblem. <laughs> <laughs> our next game is Fire Emblem uh, coming in for 2017. Yes, everybody, yes. I haven't finished Breath of the Wild. I will though, because uh, I need I need to get get that game because I actually still need to buy um, the DLC. I'm. Uh, that's I'm right. Ready the to, DLC I'm, comes out in a week. Yes. So uh, uh, June 30th is the new DLC for uh, Breath of the Wild. They did show before we get into uh, Fire Emblem because we probably won't talk about that much. Um, with the DLC, there's going to be four new amiibos coming, uh, which is actually the Guardians. Uh, you'll actually they showed off in uh, like the trials that you get to actually power up your sword, and it looks challenging. But it looks really good. Like you really got to be smart and really resourceful on what you're going to do. And I don't know how many stages it is. I don't know if they said it's 100. Maybe I don't think they said what it was. Uh, 50, I think they said. 50. Okay. So uh, we shall see what, you know, what comes through that game. So just be pretty much ready for anything that comes through. And then uh, the new DLC will be dropping this holiday uh, later on this year. So, uh, and you'll also be use, able to use the Guardian con- uh, and the full main game. Uh, with the DLC. So if you're still playing Breath of the Wild, you haven't beat it, you could probably use a Guardian and you'll probably get some more stuff. So it should be interesting to see because definitely I know people are going to do that trial. Uh, now, I don't know if there's a new game plus that's going to cover uh, carry over. Um, uh, the they, the, there's no new game plus feature yet, but they did confirm that they are adding a separate save slot for master mode or the the hard mode that's coming mm-hmm. in the during the holiday uh but they did not say anything about adding more save slots which which is kind of because i would like to play through that game again but i don't want to erase my old slot to make to to do a new one but mm-hmm. at the same time like i guess i could just create a new profile but i don't i don't want to go through all that all right but people but, are still finding stuff, so there might be some things that you haven't found yet. That I know they, there's an article I was reading today, like before I went to work, about somebody found a new secret inside the castle, and I was like, man, I need. To, I almost want to just turn it on and go check it out because <laughs> people are still finding secrets. Like as as much as a castle is featured in that game, you would think yes. like that would be the the most explored part of the game, and you know. It's it's not, you know, like the castle's intimidating if you if you're not powered up, you know, the, there's so many guardians hanging out around outside and inside there's a ton of monsters. It's just you know, the castle's intimidating. So uh, just gotta be ready for it. Uh, so good. Zelda's so good. My game of the year so far still. Yeah, my Sue. Like they like even Persona Five hasn't even topped it again. I am playing do Mass Effect Andromeda. Uh, is and, that is that gonna beat Zelda for game of the year for you? Ed? Oh heck no! <laughs> oh no 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 no! Nothing can touch. At this point, the running like 
music wise the only game that's running close to it besides super mario odyssey uh it's rhyme i love yeah. i love the soundtrack to persona 5 don't get me wrong but that'd be like that would win something else uh Breath of the Wild soundtrack, as minimalist as it is at points in times, is uh, is such a, just beautiful to listen to. And for you Switch owners who are picking up Ryan, I really do hope that because I think the game is coming with a soundtrack. Ryan, for uh, Switch owners, it's coming. It's coming with the soundtrack and uh, like a little art book. I think. Okay. If you get the if you get the physical copy, because it's ten dollars more. Buy that physical, buy that physical copy and listen to that CD. Like the music in that and rhyme is beautiful. I know we're getting a soundtrack, but the music is just glorious. It is so pleasing to the ear, and it really makes rhyme what it is. I should say, but yeah, it's 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 a phenomenal soundtrack and even if you just like if you get stressed out or anything and you feel like you need to play a video game just throw in a rhyme and if you could just listen to the music in that game please do and like like stick with it stick with that game all the way to the end because one of the levels before the end game is i think one of the best soundtrack like one of the best scores that i heard in a while now, Zelda Breath of the Wild already got a lot. Like I could throw on the I could throw on the trailer of Breath of the Wild and that <laughs> one like literally 2015 <laughs> along in music. But 2016, Zelda got like pretty much everything on like from graphics, gameplay, storyline, just everything about Zelda Breath of the Wild like changed. That's a game that changed video games. Yeah, um, I mean that it's that's a yeah. That Breath of the Wild is definitely like before the game came out, people were talking that had you know previewed it and stuff. Said it was going to be an Ocarina of Time style game where people remember it forever. You know, they remember the first time they played it. They remember that point in which you know Zelda changed forever. And that this game is it, it's. I mean, it's a game of a generation. It's a game of of you know it's it's one of those games that's going to stand the test of time forever and yes you know it's it's just one of those games i would i mean i would go out on a limb to say it's it's definitely the best zelda of all time i would say like Mm -hmm. just throwing it out there but in the way that people are going to rank their favorite zeldas you know people are always going to say ocarina might be their favorite and this one might come close people are going to say you know majora's mask is their favorite this might be my fit. This is probably my favorite Zelda game. If if I'm forced to have one favorite of the Zelda game, I agree with you. This is like my favorite. Like this, the hours and the time that I put in it, even though I didn't finish it, I'm putting seven to eight hours. I'm I'm putting the controller down and just being like, what did they just do? And just yeah. enjoying it, like enjoying the explorations. Like me and you, we got multiple shows that we probably like 75% of the show is talking about Breath of the Wild, even though they don't have nothing to do <laughs> to the topic that we're talking about, like we're doing right now. Right. Like, but like this DLC, the amiibo, the guardian amiibos, like this oh. this content, regardless of you have a problem with it, I bet you into your hand the complaint is going to probably die down. You're probably, some people will still be mad, but I'm just like, I probably would get so much out of both DLC packs than everybody who paid $40 from Fallout 4 or the cheaper price for, for, for Fallout 4 and Batman Arkham City or the Arkham Knight game. Like, there's some DLC that you paid a lot for and they barely gave you anything to be happy about this dlc for breath of the wild i'll take it yeah hard mode should have been in the game so what they're changing it for hard mode because guess what that stone guardian that you fought that you thought was dead he's beginning energy so now you have to make that fight double yeah and plus like the not only are the enemies like one stage up on what they should be in normal mode yeah they also they also regen health like all the enemies regen health. So you got to be aggressive and tactical at the same time. You can't be a def- defensive because 
they're going to get their health back and you're going to be have to fight them all over again. Like you've got to be aggressive and tactical at the same time, which makes the game that much more challenging because, you know, I'm not going to lie. I played that game a lot on the, on defense. You know, I, I scan, I can't tell you how many of the Royal shields from scanning Amiibo I've collected <laughs> just so I could play defense, you know, like I, I, I can't imagine playing this game it being harder and being super aggressive about it like and and the thing is going to be like okay speed runners you f- i feel like presley you're going to have to relearn this game mm-hmm. yeah so. uh it's and then you know they said the dlc this holiday would focus on the champions uh so that's going to be interesting to learn it, to learn more about them because i thought i thought they were all pretty interesting uh-huh. uh you know i i one of them actually wanted them in the game more to learn more about them, but uh, I'm excited. I'm excited to learn more about them and to see how it all kind of ties together. I mean, right. they kind of, when you beat the game, it kind of ties together nicely. I don't want to spoil anything because I know a lot of people are still looking for Switches and people haven't played it yet. You know, this is one of those games you don't want to spoil for people, but uh, it ties together nicely. But you still are left with some questions about about the guardians or the champions. So um, yeah. we'll see. Yeah. So let's get on to back to E3 because we don't got too much, too many games. Uh, Fallout, uh, not Fallout. <laughs> Fire Emblem is coming out this fall, 2017. Um, if you played the Warriors games, uh, Fire Fire Emblem Warriors, it's just like that. Uh, seems like it's gonna have two new protagonists and a whole new. So. You know, I'm you I'm pretty things. excited. I'm pretty excited for yeah. Warriors. Uh, I I like Hyrule Warriors, okay, but I think, you know, the amount of characters people like, uh, I think the heroes of Fire Emblem fit the mold of a Warriors game better than than the world of Zelda. Yeah, you know, I, I think, you know, having Marth in there and 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 Lucina and 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 Krom and and all those characters in there, it's gonna be, it's gonna be fun. Uh, I don't really I don't really have a lot more to say on that game i just i'm excited for it and i think that the fire Emblem universe fits that style of game better than zelda does so yeah so uh rocket league is going to be holiday 2017 they're going to be uh exclusive customer items there's also going to be cross play uh for that system so you'll be able to play hopefully with pc and with xbox players so that's huge on nintendo allowing them mm-hmm. to do that so um mm-hmm. Uh, we don't know if they're going to have any Amiibos in it or if me- Amiibo functionality is going to work, but if it does, that's very big of them. Um, yeah, definitely. So, And la- last but not least, Mario Odyssey, which is coming out October 27th. The theme song, which is, is still catchy. I love everything. Starting off with, and I, and I was telling Larry this, I'm just like, this is like a whole different graphics. Like, like it looks different seeing that uh, T Rex, it didn't see in the Mario's hat on it. It didn't the Mario game. You'd be like, This is like two different graphics that don't I, th- I honestly works. thought it was, I honestly thought it was Monster Hunter when that everybody did. Seen. Like, I thought hey, they're gonna they're finally announcing you know Monster Hunter Double Cross for Switch and there'll be a short little thing for that. Like, you know, I and then they revealed it was Odyssey. I'm like, Wait, time out, hold on a second, what's happening? It was. Yeah, Mario Odyssey is going to be it's going to be a stellar Mario game. I can't wait. Uh you know, I, I I'm always hot or cold on the Mario games. Just I don't know. I didn't I played Galaxy. I liked it. Uh I I never finished Galaxy 1 or 2. Uh but I loved like Mario 64 is one of my favorite games of all time. And every time I talk about breath of the wild, I always compare it to how I felt when I was playing Mario 64 for the first time. Uh, you know, sunshine was great. I love Mario 3d world, uh, which kind of reinvigorated my, uh, interest in Mario games actually. So I, I can't wait for odyssey. I think it's going to be super interesting. I think all the different kingdoms there re you know, it's not just the ice level. It's not just the fire level. It's not just the jungle level. It's, you know, these different kingdoms that you go to. It's the the Mexico-themed one and the 
the you know new donk city and the biodome looking thing like it's interesting and i can't wait to try on all the suits and see what they all do and the 8-bit mode that they showed where you go into the pipe and you pop up in an 8-bit yeah. mario and yeah uh, the way you just throw your hat at pretty much anything and you could become that thing like it looks good it yes. looks it looks good i i can't wait to play it Oh, I can't wait to own it. My mom, she's uh, going to get a Switch, and that'll probably be her first game. Uh, then I'll get, well, I'll have my Switch by then. Uh, definitely. I'm, I'm now just saying, like, after seeing this conference, I'm just like, yeah, let me put some money up and just full out next time we get a Switch or next two times we get a Switch. Bam. I'm, I'm just going to, I got to buy it. I got to have it. Uh, yeah. And, like, it, it sucks because, like, I was excited to play ARMS, and, like, I got it. I got it on Friday. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, and then I was like, "But, but, E three just happened, and all these new games are coming, and I haven't <laughs> even had a chance to enjoy the games you already announced." <laughs> and <her> right. <laughs> well, yeah. uh, uh, Bill Trennan hinted at a new IP that you know he was very pleased with, and regardless of how people see about it, I love this game, and this is definitely a must buy for me. So they announced Sushi Striker, the way of uh, sh- uh, Sushido. And it's a puzzle action game where you match up the sushi, you collect the plates, and you attack your opponent on the other side with the plates. And you yeah. can stack them up, and they take damage. It's kind of an rpg thing, kind of, uh, you know, by level board game that, that looks like Overworld. I laugh. These are from the developers who made NEX Remix. They got to me personally when I seen the art style. I was just like, y'all took the leap, be agents. So, like, I already love sushi. Uh, but the game looks phenomenal. It looks fantastic. Uh, and that was, like, kind of their last big announcement, actually, for E3. So, like, the Metroid Samus Return and the Sushido, uh, I mean, Sushi Striker, were, like, the two new, new games for 3DS that they announced, or the only 3DS games. Um, They did show Ever Oasis, which also got a demo, which I haven't tried yet. I have the demo on my 3DS, but I need to try it. But, yeah, that was E3. Uh, Do you want to talk about any of the stuff that Ubisoft announced for Switch? Oh, we did. Oh, we forgot Mario and uh, Rabbit's Kingdom Battle. And then that that Starlink. Starlink, a battle for Atlas. That looks phenomenal. It if, looks like it looks like what maybe Star Fox should become at some point. If if they get it right, ass like a Star Fox game, I'm all in. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. game looks cool. Uh, for those that didn't watch the Ubisoft conference, it's a. Uh, I mean, it's kind of a a late transition to the Toys for Life thing. Uh, yes. But basically, what you're doing is attaching this to your controller, and it's using the the NFC reader in the controller to project the spaceship onto the screen. And then you buy parts for your ship. That, like the ship is a toy, but basically you get to buy parts for your ship, and it also uh, reads the parts that are on your ship to give you different weapons, different abilities, different. Uh, you know, boosts and stuff. So it looks, it looks like an evolution of the Toys for Life thing. I hope it catches on because that game looks really cool. Uh, but at yes. the same time, they did they did say that all the items will be available digitally to purchase. So okay, if you don't feel like having a ton of toys lying around like I do, like all the Disney Infinities and Amiibo that I have, uh, I think uh, I think I'm probably gonna get this game. I, I would like to have maybe one ship and then customize that ship. Yes. Uh, I do have to say uh, the developer who bought the Mario, uh, the Mario game for Ubisoft who was crying. Uh, oh, I know. Did you see the picture on Twitter? He has a picture where the t- where him crying on a white T-shirt. Uh, he, and it says, don't be sad, Ubisoft man. And he's just wearing, wearing it with the bullet bill gun in his hand. <laughs> like that, that like that was so funny but that was so cool like that's a honor that's a big major honor to have me Miyamoto say that you know you know to give you that much praise uh and encouragement and stuff and it's just like 
he now knows that it might feel like pressure, but he, I think he's probably also happy at the positivity that people have gave that game. Um, yeah, he's probably he's probably fine real high. That was like that was like besides the Metroid thing and the games I'm excited for, like just the moment to moment stuff. That yes, seeing that at the beginning of the Ubisoft conference was probably the my favorite moment of E3 because like you know we've discussed this outside of the show and 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 everything like. A lot of people are overly critical about a lot of things. A lot of people make fun of things all the time, and you never really see how that affects people. You know, you you don't really realize like, you know, there are actually like real people working in this industry. You know, and like right. Ubisoft really humanized the game development aspect. You know, with Michelle Ansel being really emotional about Beyond Good and Evil Two, and then you know this at the beginning of the conference, like. I really give Ubisoft a lot of credit for humanizing their developers and really like, you know, they're proud of their development teams, you know, and, and seeing him see, you know, all of our idols that we've gr grown up playing their games for 30 years at this point, like him sitting there being like, I've played so many of this guy's games and, and he's my development hero. And for him to let me use his characters, use his assets and create the game that I wanted to make using, you know, these, and now he's proud of this game. Oh my gosh, dude, that was just right. like, oh, floodgates, and, man. <laughs> it just opened up. And, it was like, <sighs> and, and I think a lot of people weren't laughing at him. It was, it was kind of a monumentous moment for him. Like, yeah. that's, that's huge having someone to have me and Molo come out and say what he said uh about your game about your team about your development and you know just you know i would cry too like i would be i would just be in tears knowing that i'm working on like if i was if i'm a developer knowing i'm the lead developer and i'm working on the game from nintendo out myself out i don't care if this is a kirby game Y'all can mm -hmm. say it's the death of Nintendo, whatever. I'm I'm like to be like, yeah, this game is a Kirby game and this person is working on it. I would just be like I would just be in tears because I'm like one of my dreams to be working on a Nintendo game as a developer, that's huge. Yeah. You know, yeah, I, I I mean I I just I feel really good for that guy. And like I you know, I don't I don't remember the guy's name or anything, but like you could tell he poured everything he had. This was like his moment to to shine, and like right. he was so proud of what you know him and his team had accomplished. And that, like, just to, gosh, just to have Miyamoto up there talking about your game, like your right. game, right? Oh, gosh, what a feeling that that is. Right, and and uh. and I don't want to knock the guy from Brothers. Um, you know, for EA to come in and help him make his game a, a ways out, like he was really happy and excited for his new games, and that's a good feeling. Like, I think we need more stuff sometimes like that at E3, you know, instead of all the corporate talk and, and everything. Yeah. So. Yeah. And 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 like I said, um, people are probably there's probably been a lot of people who pre-ordered the game they are willing to play something new that they all laughed at and, mm -hmm. and, and including they me like it. like i'm gonna i'm not gonna lie to you i was like man this is gonna be dumb mario and the stupid rabbits are you kidding me and it turns out like after like watching the gameplay and stuff like this is this is my most anticipated game now like right you know like i i can't wait to play this game and I I pre-ordered one of the stupid rabbits, the Luigi <laughs> one. I pre-ordered that one. It's, oh wow! Yeah. And I and I can admit that I did. I have my doubts for this game. I didn't believe it was real, uh, because I wanted. I mean, and when they confirmed it, it was real. I came a believer, and I saw it. I'm like, yeah. And now it, it's weird for me to be skeptical about it. It's because I felt like, well, this could come from anything, from any kind of art asset. So I personally just feel like 
I I went to you know Ubisoft to confirm this, and they did, and it looks fantastic, and it, and it's definitely a game that I I am going to play. And a lot of people just like I even the guy who made XCOM, he did an interview that said that now um he's lucky that Nintendo and Ubisoft is making this game because now he can introduce daughter to do what's the, what works and what is all about from SCON and then when she grow up actually uh, um actually introduce her to XCOM. So that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh I'm excited. I think Nintendo is doing gosh, their lineup so far for Switch is killing it. Like yeah, I mean I talked to a couple guys like I talked to the fathers of the grind guys and uh you know, we're, this this is my last thought before we wrap up this this episode. But like, yes. Nintendo is almost putting out too many games right now, and it's I, it's exciting and almost overwhelming because I want to play everything Nintendo puts out. And like, you know, next like the next month I gotta play Splatoon, and then the next month I gotta play Rabbids, and then the next month I gotta play Pokken or Pokken, and I gotta play Mario Odyssey, and then Xenoblade, and then next year is Fire Emblem and Yoshi and Kirby and Probably and, Smash and, and some indie games and stuff like that. And, yeah, like I want to play through Axiom Verge again, and that comes out at the end of August. And right. like, and, and and this is the thing that a lot of people got to realize that I know we a lot of people been crying for third party support, but just at E three alone, Nintendo dominated the conversation for the whole entire thing. Yeah. We talk we t- when we talked about Xbox or Microsoft, we talked pretty much bad about Xbox. Uh, oh, I ca- I'm calling it the OX. Yeah, you know, people had their doubts and had their opinions on the OX and was upset about the price. Sony got a pass because it was because it, it was Sony, but nothing really didn't speak out to them besides for a lot of people was Spider Man. Yeah, I heard I heard a lot of like I was listening to uh giant bomb today and they were talking about playstation's conference and they said all you cannot you can't differentiate their games anymore because it's like oh it's the it's the slightly over the right hand shoulder uh third person action game where you know extremely uh popular hero fights monsters and like like as excited as i am to play god of war in the in the horizon dlc and stuff like and uncharted i'm like i can't i can't sit here and disagree with you like they, i said that a year ago i was like all these games look the same <laughs> you know like right so um i'm excited to see nintendo not only does nintendo have more first party games than anybody else at this conference they're all coming this year and they're the amount of diversity within the game is outstanding yes so there's a there's a lot to be excited for from e3 uh, you know, we're, we are running a little bit short on time. Uh, you know, we have life things to get to. So this was our E3 episode and I'm sure on Thursday we will revisit a lot of things and, and have good yes. discussions, uh, because there are a couple things I do want to discuss and maybe we'll just pick the games that we're m- most excited to play this, this fall and, and kind of get into what they showed and stuff. Uh, yeah. so, and I've been over watching everybody's conference because with this one, I literally had to take. I've rewatched the Nintendo conference so many times; it's ridiculous. <laughs> but I, but I want to rewatch everybody else's conference because definitely for me, I was taking notes, you know, podcasts and getting things ready, and I really didn't have time to sit down, rewatch everything, and process it. Yeah, digital devolver. Mm-hmm. We're, we're, I'm not even going to click on that. So, but yeah, but that was our Interesting. show. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I knew, no, we were supposed to have a show last week. I got caught up working. I worked all weekend. It was yes. ridiculous. And then if you guys didn't you know, tune in our, to our Twitch stream, I think it's, uh, is it up on the uh, website, NGI radio, YouTube? Um, I have it downloaded. I'm going to post it. I mean, it, at, after this episode goes up, it'll be posted. So, okay. uh, so yeah. you guys, uh, when it's uploaded, when you see it, if you hit that subscribe button, yes, do subscribe to NGR Radio uh, here on YouTube. Uh, check out our videos, our just check, check out our reaction, hear our discussion, check out the snacks that we probably were eating, <laughs> and just like the fun that Nintendo presented and the fun that we was having uh, with uh, Ray Zario, Captain L, 
El Capitan and uh, with Larry Giver. Like, do check out those uh, discussions that we have with, like, check out, just just check it out. Uh, is there, it, it's, we had so much fun. And Corey, I want to thank you. I had so much fun watching that stream with you. I'm like, we got to do this again next year. <laughs> like, like, yeah, I, I want to do we it. We got to do it every year. As long, yeah. As long as, as long as we're friends, we got to do this every oh, year, Ed. That's, that's, maybe, that's, maybe next year we'll just uh, plan a little trippy trip and we'll just, we'll just, oh, make a, make a day oh, out of it. Oh, you already know that, that when that happened. Oh, Someone might be mad at me, but I'm I'll spend the three hundred and fifty dollars round trip to come down to Cleveland and watch yes. it. And, uh, so uh, well quick outros today. Yes. Um you guys can find me on Twitter at that retro code and you can hear my podcast optional opinion on SoundCloud. There's actually gonna be a, a episode Wednesday and there's gonna be an announcement episode with a regular episode Friday. So do check that out. Yes, yes. You can find me at Corey and HD on Instagram, Corey Hudson and HD on Twitter. Uh you can find me here on Pow Block every Monday and most of the time Thursday when we well actually it'd be tuesday and friday huh wow i totally messed that up you can find us tuesday and fridays on your podcast service of choice and on youtube on the ngr radio youtube ngrradio.com and yeah yes please subscribe rate us all that good stuff and until next time we love you we love you guys and we are out bye Woo. Yeah.